Right, hi your eleven. This is Mr. Lim here again, and this is our uh, another video in Aqueous Solutions about how to write observations for specifically precipitation reactions. All right, so we're gonna find out what colors things certain things are and write observations. Okay, so let's have a look. So ionic solids and ions in solution can be different colors. These colors can be found on the data sheet. Uh, and these ionic solids. Uh, okay, so. We've seen we've done this once before when we did um, observations with uh, halogens and their and the what's the 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 hydrocarbons right so this is a, on the same page but on a different section um, there are the colors of the ions in aqueous solution and the colors of ionic solids because they are so they also have colors as well so ionic colors are the colors in the data sheet or they are the colors of their component ions. So what does that mean? All right, in the data sheet, there is a table for ionic solids here. All right, those are the colors of certain ionic solids, or they have a color of their component ions. So if I was to say something like um, sodium chloride, what color is sodium chloride? Well, it'll be the color of its component ions. So you would have to look for the color of sodium and you would have to look for the color of the chlorine, all right? So the color of sodium, it's not there. Color of chlorine, not there. And so we'll deal with what that means in a moment. If the ionic solid, here we go, or the component ions are not listed on the data sheet, then the ionic solid is white. So that NaCl is white, all right? That's for ionic solids, okay? So please note that that's for a different idea for the next one. Ions in solution, however, are the colors of their component ions as stated in the data sheet. So now you're looking at the color of aqueous solutions, right? If the ion is in solution and is not listed in the data sheet, it is colorless, right? So if you find an ion that's not one of those ones down there, like Na, it's a colorless solution, right? So if you think about it, NaCl is salt water, that's just a colorless solution. Ionic solutions are also clear, meaning that they are transparent. So in other words, uh, Let's go look through a couple of these and then let's work out what color they are. So let's go grab this and delete you. Okay, cool. So let's have a look. So first of all, example one, solid uh, sodium sulfate. So first of all, we look for on the ionic solids table because it's a solid, right? And so we say, is sodium sulfate there? Mm, no, it's not. Okay, sodium sulfate, not there. So now we have to look at it's component ions. So we look for sodium, sodium not there. We look for sulfate, it's not there. So if they're not listed on the data sheet, then the ionic solid is white. So sodium sulfate, uh, Na2SO4, it's a white solid. Okay, let's have a look at copper two nitrate solution. So now because this is a solution, this is a solution. We have to look at this as part here, right? So ions in solution are the color of their component ions stated in the data sheet. So what are the component ions? Copper, two, and nitrate. So we look for copper two. Is it here in the colors of ions in aqueous solutions? Yes, it is. Copper two is there. It is blue. The nitrate solution, nitrate, not there. So it's just going to be a uh, Cu bracket NO3 aqueous and solid is a blue solution. We can also say that this one is a white solid. Right? And then the last one is chromium 3 ethanoate. So chromium 3 ethanoate. Right? And it's a solution. So we have to look. Okay, what are the component ions? Chromium and ethanoate. So we look at chromium. Here it is. It's deep green. We look for ethanoate. It's not there. So therefore, it is a deep green solution. Oops. So these are the colors of ions in their solid or in their uh, aqueous forms. Okay. So precipitation reactions can then change color in the reaction depending on the reaction that is occurring. The relative amounts of each reactant and the spectator ions in the reaction should also be taken into account. So the relative amount, oops, that's not what I wanted. The relative amounts of each reactant and the spectator ions 
should also be taken into account, right? And obviously the precipitate as well. So let's have a look at what we've got. Sodium hydroxide solution is added to excess copper nit nitrate solution. So here are our two things, sodium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide and copper two nitrate. That's our first reaction. Okay, so we would use the, uh, what we remember about the solubility table and how to make precipitate, uh, write ionic equations. We'll try and write an ionic equation for this one. So sodium nitrate and copper hydroxide, those are our two combinations. We know that sodium nitrate is soluble, so we're just looking for copper hydroxide. So copper hydroxide, most hydroxides are insoluble except for, well, copper's not there. So this is the reaction. Uh, OH minus AQ plus Cu2 plus aqueous goes to Cu bracket OH bracket 2 uh, solid. Okay, now, that's that. We have to work out what colour things are. Now, remember... We have to, or when we talk about observations, we generally structure it so that you talk about the, the, um, the reactants and then the products and what they look like. So we have to say, what does a sodium hydroxide solution look like? So sodium hydroxide solution is one of our reactants. What does that look like? Sodium, not there, means it's a colorless solution. Hydroxide, not there, which means it's a colorless solution. Right, because that's what we're doing with ions and aqueous solution, because it was a solution. Is added to excess copper to nitrate. So we say copper, is it there? Well, yes, it is. That's blue. And nitrate, that's not there. So that's just blue solution. So you would say that a colorless solution is added to a blue solution. That's the copper to nitrate but you can't write what it is in an observation, right? And then we have to think about what's happening at the end, okay? So that's what is the two reactants and we're putting them together. Now we have to think about what's happening at the end. So what's at the end? You've got the copper hydroxide. So what color is the copper hydroxide? So remember, it's a solid. So we look at this table first and then we look at this table, All right? So copper hydroxide, uh, not there. Okay, so that means it'll take on the color of its component ions. So we're going to check here. Copper is here. It's going to be blue. Hydroxide is there. Well, not there. So therefore, it's going to be blue. Right? So that's going to say forms a blue solid. That's the copper hydroxide. All right? Now, what else is around that copper hydroxide? Well, it's in solution. It's in a, like a liquid of some sort. And what's in that liquid? Well, we know that sodium's in that liquid. We know that nitrate's in that liquid, right? And sodium and nitrate are both colorless. But remember, we have to talk about the relative amounts of each reactant, okay? Because we just talked about the spectator ions, the sodium and the nitrate, they didn't do anything. Whatever color they are, they're going to be colorless, so it doesn't make a difference, All right? However, this says it's adding to excess copper to nitrate, which means that there, <coughs> there'll still be some copper ions in solution, all right? It forms a blue solid, and because of the copper two uh, ions still in solution, uh, the blue solution fades to uh, uh, less intense blue. Now, it does not go colorless because you don't run out of copper ions, but and it will get less blue, so you just say that it has a less intense blue in the solution. All right? So you have to set, think, what are the reactants? That's the reactants. What are the products? Blue solid. And any spectator ions or uh, any leftover ions in that reaction. Okay? That's the stuff that you're going to have to remember. Okay, let's go do the next one. All right, so we're doing the next one. So the next one is copper to sulfate added to excess lead to nitrate. Okay, so let's have a look. So we will be looking for any precipitations to occur. So let's move this back up a bit. Right, so uh, precipitations. 
we're looking for copper nitrate and we know that copper nitrate will not precipitate because all nitrates will not uh, precipitate so then we look for lead sulfate so we look at sulfates here we go most sulfates are soluble except for lead sulfate so the lead sulfate is going to be insoluble so let's go write that out okay so that will be uh, pb2 plus aq uh, plus so4 to minus aq which goes to pbso4 uh, solid okay cool so that's done there now let's have a think about the observations so what are the reactants so we got copper sulfate solution and lead nitrate solution so copper sulfate solution we got to look for r so colors of ions in aqueous solutions <coughs> We've got the copper sulfate, copper, okay, it's blue, sulfate, no color, so it's just a blue solution. And then we look at the lead to nitrate, the lead, no color, nitrate, no color, so it's a colorless solution. So we say a blue solution added to a colorless solution. Okay, and then uh, we look at the products. So the products formed, so the products formed is going to be PbSO4. Let's have a look at that. So first of all, we have to look at, it's an ionic solid, so we've got to look at the ionic solids table. Lead, okay, we've got lead iodide, lead sulfide, but that's neither of those two things. So not on this table. So we have a look at the other part here. Lead, 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 not there. Sulfate, not there. If it's not that, then it's going to be a white solid formed in A. Now we have to think about what are the ions in solution that are left. So let's have a think, right? Uh, copper is a spectator ion here and copper is blue, right? So copper is blue. So your copper ions are all going to be there. So they're going to be there and still be floating around as a spectator ion. <clears throat> as are your nitrates. Nitrates are colorless, but copper, however, is blue. All right. We're also going to have excess lead ions because you are excess lead nitrate. You're going to have no sulfate ions left. So excess lead ions, lead ions don't have a color either. So therefore, it's going to be just the copper that has a color. So it's going to be in a blue solution. And if you really felt like it, you could say slightly less blue because you've diluted it by adding um, lead nitrate to it. All right, so white solid formed in a less blue solution. Okay, now let's do the last one. We've got the nickel to nitrate and the sodium phosphate. So we'll highlight those to show them out. Nickel nitrate solution, excess sodium phosphate solution. So let's have a look. Okay, let's work out if any precipitation reactions occur. So we're looking at nickel phosphate and sodium nitrate. So sodium nitrate, we know that it's not going to form a precipitate, but then let's have a look at nickel phosphate. So nickel phosphate, so phosphate, 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 phosphate here. Okay, it's in the insoluble column, and nickel is not an exception. So the equation would be nickel to AQ plus phosphate. AQ goes to nickel phosphate solid, balance out the equation, right? And there you have it. Now let's look at the observations. So what do we have at the beginning? So we have nickel to nitrate, nickel to nitrate. So it's a solution. So we're looking at this table here. We got nickel, 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 nickel. Nickel is a green uh, ion. Nitrate got no color. So therefore, it's just going to be a green solution. Sodium, nothing, no color. Phosphate, nothing, no color. So it's going to be a green solution. That's the nickel one. Added to colorless solution. Right, so that's the reactants. Now we have to look at the products. So the nickel phosphate, we have to check because it's a solid. We have to check here first, nickel sulfate, uh, nickel phosphate, not there, right? That means it's the color of its component ions. So nickel, here we go, nickel here. So it's going to be 
and the phosphate not there so it's going to be a green solid green solid formed okay as well as well and it's going to be in a solution of salt in and then we have to think about what ions are present there so are there any leftover nickel ions no because it's not in excess it's the limiting one so therefore the nickel all of them are used up the nitrate that's a spectator ion but the yeah there are no uh it has no color so it's going to be colorless added to excess sodium that's another spectator ion so that's also colorless and phosphate there will be excess phosphate so there'll be some left over however there's no color there so it's a green solid formed in a colorless solution okay and that's it that's the observations adios